we doing today, everybody? Guess what I got for you today? It's something I've been waiting to share with you. It is the Icon Factory Tour, and it's starting now. We are heading out. We're getting to Minneapolis, and then we're heading to New York, then we're into East Tennessee. We're getting out of Wisconsin right now. We're out. You ready for the travel sequence? made it. We are here. We are in Knoxville. We are now going to go get some more footage stuff and then we are going to go to bed. It's been one of those days. So that's what we do. We'll see you tomorrow. We are on site and ready as the sun came up. Let's go. We're following him. So throughout this video, you're gonna see mainly three guys. You got Tommy, who's in charge of basically operations, right? Of the whole plant. We got Scott, who's in charge of, uh, what do, what do you want? Sales. Sales and probably some marketing, I would say. And then we've got um, Brent, who's just like the guy that they throw everything at and he gets it, he goes and tests it, does it. This is good, this is bad. Take this, throw this, we're keeping this type of thing. Those are your three main guys you're gonna see throughout this video. Oh, I got so this is obviously the lamination shot. Mm -hmm. Gel coat here behind the curtains. Obviously you gotta have good protection there with your gel coat. Yep. Uh, we do all three parts in there, the deck hole and liner. We're getting ready to expand. I also do the gel coat here uh, to have another spot to do that. Uh, so as you can see behind you here, this is a hole that's already been sprayed. It's got a gel coated bottom. It's got a metal flake side and a metal flake stripe. And then the black that you see there is what we call barrier coat. Okay. It's protection from basically water getting to the ever getting to the land. Okay. Behind you, this is after gel coat. This is actually what we call the skin area, yep. skin coat. Yep, yep. Obviously you have your some of your best rollers, your best people on these. Right. This is what uh, any defections here. Obviously, you see it. You yep. get an air pocket in it, and you pull the part, bust out, you see the air. Yep. Very okay. important. Okay. TC's made it clear that perfection is the standard here. So, yes, on the whole, the next step will be skin coat. Then I'll show you what happens after skin coat. So after skinned, obviously, we have to keep keep the line moving so it comes down, it sets, and it gets what we call a bar call. We got a bar call meter that says, hey, this skin coat is now cured enough now we're going to put what we call a bulk layers on it. So this is where your core material goes in. This is where your added bulk to your material goes in to get the strength of the deck. When it's upside down, you're walking on it. This is what creates all of that strength. Okay. Okay. You can see anywhere there's a screw that goes in, this purple material, yep, it's called Trevera. Okay. That is 100% for screw intention. So anytime you put a screw in there, it's just not going into fiberglass. This is actually better than HDPE. This is, a, this is the walking deck. If you're looking at it from the top yep, side, yep. heavy core here, controller motor reset, controller motor reset, front where the, all your electronics will be right yep. there. Okay. Yep, that gets cut out for your easy access on the service side. Yep. Okay. Okay. okay, yep. This controller motor here, controller motor. Yep, controller motor. Yep, that's a big piece of, uh, piece of there. The okay. controller motor, yep. half inch. Yep, yep, major support right there. Okay, that's nice. Like. No. These purple pieces here, that's where your lid is attached. Yep, yep. I'll cut those right in. I have to worry about the cooler back out. All right. Same way here. This is your cooler. Yep, yep, yep. Glove box cooler. Glove box cooler. Those are, you'll see those, they get foamy. Yep. Um, you can probably see it on there. Yeah, we saw them. Yep. They're insulated real well. Yep, yep, yep. This mess here, it looks like a mess. That's what we use to pull the part off the ball. Pull the ball. Pull the ball. Yep, yep, okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, this oh, is back compartment. This is the part. That's the seat yeah. there. That's your helm, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's your. This thing flips over. Yep. So yep. that's your driver's, driver's side. side. Yep. So if you look, I'll show you on that side there. We've got a big piece of pizza in there. So all your PDMs too, and all that. And I'll show you that. Right here. So this is all heavy right here. So obviously, if you're on the back deck, you're walking. You don't want any flex. Yep. 
This thing has good core, good materials here to create a lot of stiffness. That's basically the deck. You get to see the deck built from basically from skin coat and it's finished out. The next is to we'll let it get its bark off, we'll let it cure out. Yep. And we'll pull this by the end of the day. This one just came from over there then. Correct. Yep. This one was actually skinned on uh, Friday. On Friday. Okay. How long is it gonna sit? Uh, I mean it's according to bark off. We all go by bark off. Some days with humidity and all that it changes. Yeah. But you know, you gotta give them a good cure. Uh, it can be anywhere from you know four to twelve hours according to to the weather. Okay. So we do, this is some of the infusion I was telling you about. Yep. Okay. This thing gets loaded with dry material. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't even, uh, you don't let any of this material out. It gets loaded. This vacuum pump, you throw the resin to it, sucks it all the way through the material. So the vacuum infusion on the seats is probably, when it comes to molding of seats, getting it so it's structurally the strongest possible it can be. Um, I mean, they, they do that with hulls, and now they're doing it with seats. If that doesn't ring true to the quality and the standard, I don't know what would. You see the end result right here, okay. after they're pulled. So all of your core material are perfect. You have to worry about, you know, getting there with your air roller, or trying to get it nice and smooth. Yep. Zero impression. That does it all for you. Zero that bag sucks it in every little corner, every little cranny you got. And honestly, it creates a lot lighter part. I mean, obviously, this has got to be pretty stiff. To right. be, you got a 400 pound, even it may make you do a 400 pound pull test to make sure this thing doesn't break. Mm -hmm. So, to do that, it's going to have to stiffen it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Resin is not stiff, so to get all that resin out of that is very important and also creates a lot of part. Mm -hmm. TC made it perfectly clear that he hated the construction of that console. In order to get the luxury that we wanted, we wanted a 100% fiberglass panel. We didn't want a bunch of bolt-on plastic parts, parts that faded in the UV, rattled, come apart, broke. We had to fight with suppliers on what was good, what was bad. It's 100% fiberglass. All right, I mean, it's three molds, boom, boom, boom. And to make it as rock solid as it is, it, it's it's the cat's ass. I mean, it, there, and the thing that we talked about is there's no decals on this thing. They want you to see no lines. Like where things come together, they want you to see that we are perfection. So we build this thing in three different molds. Mm -hmm. It all comes together to create the dash that we want. We post finish every dash. And when, when it's done, you'll see over there, beautiful luxury fiberglass piece. And it is solid as, as you'll see. You won't see any rattling parts. When you go on the lake test later, you'll see a bunch of stuff moving, a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different angles. It's all right here. All built in the mold. Okay. You can see all this material is loaded on top of the skin. Yep. All the core is placed exactly where it goes. It's all glued in. Then we throw a bag on this thing. Yep. We throw the resin to it. Sucks all the excess resin out of it. And this is the result. This is one of the prettiest holes you'll ever see. Very accurate. Very as light as you could get. One. Very rich. Go through material for everybody. So what have we got? laying down the middle. So this is just your heavy core here. Okay. This is your bi-axle material. Yep. This is a huge piece of coosin, two inch. Okay, yep. This is your transfer board for your obviously for your engine. Yep. This is your Travera. When you cap the deck, two layers. Yep. When you cap it and your screws are holding this thing for retention. Yep. This holds it all the way in. This core runs, as you can see, runs all the way up to yep. 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 yep, yep. That's what that's your impact. Yep. We infuse this the hull because we want the light, we want it to be light, and we want it to be strong. Yep. Yep. This allows us to do, and it's incredibly consistent. Right. Everyone is, everybody who buys one is getting the exact same thing. Right. There is no variation. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to be able to be there and see the early stages of the process. You can see the early stages of the company and see the early stages of the total build process from start to finish to rigging to finishing up. Um, it, it just rings true to the quality of people that work at Icon and HCB and the quality of management that's there that it'll actually take pride in every inch along the way and you, you get to see that. She's clean. We get to the other side, you can see with the stringer in there yeah. and that's where you're going to start seeing how we designed it for service. Yeah. 
and we can maybe do it later today. I can bring y'all back over here. We'll have the liner sitting here that's going in this mold or in this part to set it in. I can walk y'all through that process. Yeah, right. so we've got a That'd be really system. cool. We've got a stringer system way above everyone else. That'd be really cool. We need to see it. Off to the next building. Let's go. This is going to be our engineering center, yeah. and it's mainly for Icon. I mean, it's nothing like that folks. All the engineers will be in here. Uh, we'll be able to house probably 15, whether it be manufacturing engineers, service, there you go. design engineers. They'll all be in here. We just built them another 3,000 square feet. Brand new too. All right, guys, so here's the assembly area. So it all starts with what we call pre-cap. So we get came from lamps. Uh, we didn't walk you through the cut and grind process. But basically, all the holes we've got tubes for all the holes. Mm -hmm. uh, that gets drilled. It goes through a what we call PI, a you know, patch and spec on it. Make sure all the gel coat, all that's where we want it. Then it comes here. It's called street cap. This is station number one. What we've learned in the past is we want to put as much on in this area as possible. Makes sense. So it's easier to get to. The guys can apply the things properly. It's not, you know, you're trying to bend over and put stuff in after the fact. Probably, I'm gonna guess, 75% of the parts get put on in this area right here. So this is the hole. If you look at the hole, all finished. This thing is weld on in, you can see. Mm -hmm. It's bonded to the hole. Obviously, the stiffness that you want throughout the whole entire. You see the way the core went through the body. All this ties in. You see here where it bonds here in each area. Keeps your sides very rigid. The same goes for obviously you see from side to side. I don't have any flanks in this hole. Big water. You see your transom knees. This is all off a of molded part. Transom knees coming down for your engine support. Shows you the two inch cusa. It's also embedded in behind this line. With well done. Basically, your liner in your hole is mashed, sandwiched, and it is. You can see our liner goes from bow to stern, bow to stern, all one piece connected, nothing. The center console is our second piece. We cut out because we want to take advantage of that whole depth. Yep, yep. And then the new thing that from your end, from the service, you got these big wide. Yep. So you can run all your wiring down through these, through here. You see it in the back, it's all the same. You got the same all the way around the whole thing. So you can get wires in and out and through. And then once it's tapped and you're in here, yeah. now you can get in there, Access. get it here, and get in there, and get up to there, get up to the front. You can reach everything. So you'll see it as yep. it's capped. But when you see it this way, you kind of see, oh, that's really interesting. Why is that like that? Well, now you got an access point to something when you're through there. The serviceability factors that they looked at when they were building these molds, I love it. I love being able to get and service everything that is possible to touch, feel, and see inside this. Great, great, great. So anywhere you see a red plastic, that's where we got foam. Foam. That's yeah. your flotation foam. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your hole. All these areas I was telling you that it gets yep. it's got the traverse behind yep. it for yep. screw yep. retention. You guys don't have the harness ran yet. The harness runs basically all along the starboard side. Okay. Starts right here. This is where your battery sits. This is your main battery panel. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah. It's here. Then your your harness basically runs all the way up and ends up up there in your uh, access area up right around your trunk. Okay. That's where it ends. And in the lamination process, the big old piece of aqua steel right here. Okay. Basically, that stuff is like is like steel. You can actually thread it with pack. And that's what we do all the testing. Okay. Yeah. And you seen it upside down? You seen the floor? I showed you all that core. Mm -hmm. That's for this big wide span right, right here. Okay. You know, we got aqua steel in each seat. Keep those from ripping out. Any type of movement there. That is your fuel tank access. You'll see that when we do the service. That's your fuel walk. cell right there. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's the Star Wars. Yeah, we call that our Star Wars fuel tank. Yeah, that's what it looks like. First thing I thought of. Yep. So we go. Like we maximize it as much as we could. Get the low profile we wanted. 
Yep. Yep. So basically, it sits under the seats and the rest of the key. How many gallons? Uh, fifty. It's at fifty, right? Fifty gallons. Yeah. We, that's with you, Lynch, You're talking fifty-three. To, I mean, you can yeah. probably get it to fifty-three. Yeah. 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 See, all of our metal striker plates where we're not chipping gel. Yeah. We decided to do that throughout the whole entire boat. So they drop down just below. Yep. The gel coat. Okay. Where your paw is resting on your metal, not your gel coat. You know, people use that mistake, and it's. Something, something to see when it's in this state right here is you notice everything is slanted this way so anytime if there was any reason you got water up here it all flows down we got double drains on each side that's when remember we was talking to Matt over there and Matt was like everything flows to a spot because we want it to be able to drain yep. so nothing holds water even when the seats are in you can see underneath the seats it's all slanted forward to get the water where we want it to go so the things you really don't get to see is like when you look at the video, you don't understand that the boat itself is all angled to come to a one meeting session for it to drain. And it's not a single drain, it's three drains. And everything is tapered to the middle. The boat is literally tapered to the middle. So all the water runs away and it runs to the drain and then the drain to the bilge and the high quality bilge pump that they're using to get rid of that water. So it's not like you have standing water in your compartment lids or around or you're stepping in a puddle. It's not one single drain, it's multiple drains. So you got one drain that plug, plugs up, you got another drains to get rid of that water. So this is another access point up here. Yep. That's a lid that goes right above your head there, you can access it. That's the neat smart control This is all your mercury stuff. Yep. And this is serviceable through the yes. console. Yep. Right. And through here. And through the dam. No, it's not the console. You got a lid that goes here. Okay, yeah. Your console's already, you see your console there. That's for the up, that's for up on top. Okay, yeah. Screen so we, top. we can get there through here. Yeah. Uh, through here. Yeah. And you can pull this off very easily. Yeah, yeah it's all yeah. access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you got your throttle panel you can take off the access. Yeah. That's what we were saying. We took, we, we kept this whole large. Yep. No, that's huge. That's huge. So you can reach everything here. I can get my hand all over here, no problem. Yeah. And you can get it from here. Yep. So you got. All kinds of access. From the aspect of being under the cap and looking at it when it comes to service, um, the serviceability portions of this boat being able to get to the smart craft area, to be able to get to all of your fuses, to be able to get to the connections, the things where everything meets up, it is so crucial, so crucial. Um, they did all that thinking and they did all of that and when they build the harnesses, they build them designed so you can service them. So if we got A and B, we don't have anybody in the middle where we can't get to. We service here, we service here. That was the biggest thing I took away from Icon is that when they were thinking about it, they thought of, if this breaks, how are we gonna fix it? Can we get this out? That's one of the, it, it, it doesn't happen a lot in this industry, guys, okay? They actually thought of that. They said, this may break, it's not no fault to us. It could be manufactured, it could be whatever, but we gotta be able to get that out of there. That is what took my mind and went, holy crap, someone's actually thinking of me. Good deal. This is where they put on all the lids. They do the final connections. You'll put in the rod straps. You'll put in the helm seats. The, it's what we call the dash hood. The little piece that goes on top Yep. yep for that. All the things that's easy accessible from the top side right. is what he does. Okay. So these guys will pin it. They'll do some battery connections, some wiring connections. They'll carpet the deck. Mm -hmm. This guy here, he's just finishing up all the stuff that's easy. Final, final. Final. Yeah. That's why we really emphasize getting everything on as possible back in the pre-cap station. Yeah. As you can see back there, it's a lot easier to do to try to maneuver up here. Right. Right. Next up, live well. So this is our live well. It's being sub-assembled now, as you can tell. These little red dots represent, it is foamed all the way around. It's a two-piece mold. It's put together in the mold. It's just gets drilled out, and this entire surface here is filled with foam. Obviously got a float switch, cuts it off when it gets full. Yep. This is the top side. This hole right here is not a mistake. This is where our compressor is going. This is our chiller plate. This is what's going to cool the water. Um, obviously, this goes out to, a, to the actual compressor. Sets in the storage area there. This mounts here for that. All right, so with the live well, um, I think it is completely engineered to the perfection of like a 
miniature cooler, like a cooler that you get that you put voltage to. Um, and they thought about everything. They thought about it as if the fact of, you know, you're going to the gas station, you're throwing ice in your live well before you get going, before you put water. And now you don't got to do that. You can just turn it on when you get when you leave the house or leave wherever you are, leave the motel. You can turn this thing on, and you'll be able to see. You know, you'll be able to get in your boat and be like, all right, that thing's down to 48 degrees. That's going to be perfect, or whatever you want to do. And you're going to be able to keep that monitored throughout the day. The live well itself. I've always said we need to be able to monitor what's going on in our live well. We need to know that the water temperature is 66, and my live well is 64, 62, or we're not creeping up in 80 degree crap, all right? Um, that, the live well itself to me is top notch, top notch, 100%. To get more looks at that, make sure we go check out the on the water video, which is right in here. We wanna make sure that we go check that out. Um, you'll see some more of that. And Brett actually goes into high detail about that and you get to see some function. So make sure you go check that out. Also your drains here. Good thing mounts up to the deck, through bolts through the deck. Yeah. Some of the aqua steel you've seen there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it holds this together. And it's permanently attached to the deck by coming off. Yeah, so for us, for the key, you're right, everything is soft edged. Yep. So fish is never going to hit on anything sharp. Yep. Not, there's not one thing in here that's sharp. Mm -hmm. that a fish could do any damage to a fish. Our lid fits, we have a, have a plate that goes on top of this that fits tight. The water fills tight to the top. So then there's no sloshing. Yep. So the fish is in a normal environment, tight water. Yep. You'll see our live well lids. They are made for this thing to have zero slosh in. This is all of your pumps. Yep. We put in our own system. See the Venturi's right here? Yep, yep, yep. We've got a patent pending on this thing. Not pending, we've got a patent that we did our own. It's where um, this thing is creating massive, massive bubbles. And this thing is creating major oxygen. We're going to show that to you on the way. Yep. Finally, a temperature controlled live well that you can see. Listen up as TC and Scott give you some more info. As soon as you get it, bag your bottle of water, fill it full, turn on your chillers, and get this thing So it does, it'll drop a degree and a half an hour. So if you, if you fill it with surface water, from your boat, you know, you're going to pull it in, yep. fill it up, if the water's 85 degrees, and you say, I want it 75, then you set it at 75, and then it'll drop a degree and a half every hour. Until it hits your set point, then it'll just hold it at your set point. So it's just a degree and a half every hour. So it doesn't like the other side you don't want to catch a fish take it from 85 to 60 all oh, right <laughs> shock them what yeah. they do with ice and then you did the worst thing right, right. right. So we're trying to keep it the biggest thing is you know yeah people people get a fish line they fill up their bag they take it they weigh it yeah. in yeah. then you take it back to the line but the two days from then they're done yeah. our goal is we keep it in the line they stay alive right and we don't lose a fish two days from them. right they're always alive Mm -hmm. So this is our test tank for that. It goes on here, it on it, make sure it doesn't leak before it ever goes to the back. Okay. So we try to get all, if there's any leaks to it, you know, we try to get it caught here. That way when we go, when our lake tester goes to the lake, we're not, you know, sitting back here trying to fix leaks. Right. He's testing performance on the boat. Now it's time for the initial walkthrough with Brent Butler. Andy, Andy, Andy Brent's you. name a few times, yep. right Andy? Yep. 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 So yeah, Brent will... Made. Do a complete product walkthrough okay. well, of the boat, right. just like we would with one of our dealers, one yep. of our sales guys. Yep. He'll walk that detail, so now you'll have a complete understanding of the boat. Yep. Any any questions? Frank can answer. Let's go look. All right. Now, now I, I watch you guys' videos and stuff, so here's what I want to do. I want to let you go through it first before I explain anything. I see one of the big comments was with serviceability. You had a question? Okay. All right. So. All right, so we know that Brent has watched our videos from time to time. He knows that if I come into this thing and I, I think it's a shit pile or a garbage dumpster fire, I'm going to tell him it's shit. And that's the part I think that intrigued Icon about what we were going to do. We, they knew they were going to get honesty. So, yeah, Brent, see how it turned out. So, obviously, a lot of service takes place back here. Yep. All right, so I'm going I'm to let you just look and just start giving your opinion if you got any questions, and then we'll. Uh, go from there because i know there's a big thing on pump access yep. and okay. other stuff and uh you can see within research pumps pump outs 
bilge pump float switch. Um, then you've got right here below us are two live well fields mm -hmm. as well, and then the remote drain plug. So it's pretty simple, and everything's a doage, doage connected. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Simplicity what? is the number one thing. Right. Want that lid out of your way? It's gonna have to be, yep. Hold on just a second. Let me get it. I don't have it. This will pop off here. Yep. yep. Those two come together. People need to see it, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't want this falling and hit me. I got it. So. Over here. Number one no-no is they put our screws in too far already, which is not right. Go get my fillings. Uh-oh. I bet you they didn't want that to happen. So yep. right, the there, these, will, these yep. will stick up a half inch. Yep. It's got a spring system in here. Pull the bolt back. Yep. Lid Just like a transom off. saver style. Same concept. Same yep. Concept. That's yep. it. Yep. You want to make that your now I'm going to be honest with you. This is the very first one that's they're actually running this far. And uh, I'm really not sure why, to be honest with you. These things happen. We're all human, all right? It's just, it's just product to show that everybody is probably just getting the stuff worked out. I mean, new company, new things, but yeah, they'll get it worked out. I'm sure they already took care of it. <laughs> now I'm really getting a kick out of this one. Yeah, I'm not happy. That's a very good question. Unless you still got the carpet. All right, other so, side, other side, it? other side. No, you're not. Oh, you, you, you can do it. Yeah, and it'll pop out. Yeah. You know, it's a barrel system, but yep. then that way it can float in general. Yep. So you're still, um, you can get it off out of the way, you know, either way, and I promise you it's not going to leave it like that, I can tell you that. And then the, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I got it. Your yep, bus, yep. Your, your bus bar, the bus bar there. Just hook them right in. Yep, yep. Accessibility to run lines for the power poles. Do you have an access uh, point that works for after the fact? Yes. That's one of the biggest, so, you know, complaints. Also, if, if you feel I've already gone, I've already gone it to the eighth inch bit. Okay. You feel me in the back? Yeah. Basically, an inch and a half, uh, inch and a half, and uh, okay. three and a half. Okay. And then if you reach right on this back wall, you you'll be able to feel it basically come straight through here. Yep. In line with the battery charger, so we've got a harness up above it. Okay. And then they'll come through and shoot straight over okay. to it. Because you know the worst thing about it is you guys took all the time in the world to make this so neat and clean. And then, and then, then, you and then lines, right, you can't right. run any lines or Bill at Bill's Marine decides to just make it look like a pot. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just runs through and then you get all that right. snag and stuff. And you yeah. know, as well as I do power pole, obviously it's too much. Right. What do you do with the access? How do you make it look nice? Mm -hmm. And that's just yeah. the biggest thing. You just, I can see somebody just gouging a hole back there thinking that's the right spot. Right. Yeah. They will. Right. They will. That's, yeah. you know, I, I guess we, we get so many boats that come in and they're like, gaping hole right there or something like that but yeah uh, no that, that yeah we, we checked in a couple you know a couple of uh fittings and stuff and just yeah it, it's really hard to beat what they send with them all right yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Day, so uh, my thing with them was is they i told them that they should create the through haul for boat manufacturers and then run a short thing and it's just a style and then they can yes. run shorts in here yep you know we i've gone to the hydraulic place and done that shorten them up yeah and made them make new lines and it, it looks so clean it looks really clean it essentially looks just like you're steering you yep. know what i mean and they just run them in but they haven't right. gotten to that point yet so. right but on the transom that's neat and clean that would just look beautiful mm -hmm. the rear compartment is a dream if you're a service guy um it's clean no sharp edges no fiberglass waiting to stick underneath your fingernails get in your arms get in your elbows you go home take a shower and you can't scrub your arm because there's a bunch of fiberglass around you that boat is not that way. That is a dream for service people. Um, the live well pumps, any of that stuff, all of that is just, it, it's amazing to see. It's amazing to be part of. Down. 
Test that seat, see if you have to muscle up. Slides back, you want to go back further. Comfortable. Slides up, go up further. Yeah, comfortable. It's comfortable. No, it's easy to get in and out, like we said. Pro angler rods. Yep. Yeah, for them. These motors should be picking it up. So, so we got the uh, option yep. of, uh, you know, the drop-in tub drop -in and or, you know, you got your clothes out. See, it just depends on whatever the, the customer wants. And as far as being able to, you know, put tackle in there. Me, me personally, this is what I'm, I'm going to use personally. Right. Mm -hmm. Just put my boxes in there. It's got, you know, as far as conveniency for whatever. Right. You know. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of all, you know, all fish as far as. So when we put the chiller plate, in, when we pop the chiller plate in there, yep. the compressor goes in this and it cuts this in half. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Shallow. Shallow uh, tub. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've already seen the live well yep. in there, Jim. Yep. You see one with a, a big, uh, you know, hole, so it's not big uh, fish mm -hmm. as well. You know? mm -hmm. And you can see within the plate, everything's. Solid, smooth, you know, you don't have wrong jagged edges. Yep. Make sure we check out our full lake test video right up here. Just make sure you get to see that live well in full action. We have uh, knobs to put our anchor light right here to make it convenient right here on the side instead of putting it, you know, elsewhere. The uh, forward facing sonar boxes, we've been mounting right up in here on the side wall. Yep. We've got plenty of options of uh, where the guy wants to mount them at. I'm going to go in a second. Then we got our day box right here. So I have a drop-in tub and we have a fire extinguisher right, located right under here as well. Yep. And then you see all the engine stuff so yep. you, you can plug into it real easy. Um, within our mercury gateway system, you don't have to put the cowl on off and right. no troubleshooting yep, yep, the engine. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, try to make it as convenient as possible. Uh, especially if the dealer gets one in. You know, and he's oh, yeah. the final tweak, and you understand the setup process on that for sure. All right, and then here, what we're really proud about right here is all your access with the, you, you got a drop in, drop in tray as well. I've been keeping my colon rings, the power scales, and stuff right here because I like it for me at work, but you got all kinds of options. Now, when you pull this out, Obviously, now this is key with rigging work, all right? Yeah, okay. Saying, yeah, yeah. This. Out of the way, and we can look at another boat as well. Right. All right. You can be out of the way, but you got, you have a factory Nema bus bar, yep. which is mounted right here. Then you got your, uh, you know, your haunts and your grounds, yep. your fuse block and everything. So it's got yep. eight gauge wire. It's run up to the bow as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got the same thing up there to accommodate three graphs, you know, forward facing sonar, 360, I mean, whatever the guys want. Um, but you got your access there. <laughs> Let's see. Up here at the bow, we wanted to have a way that we could, uh, that you could basically access the front without having to take all of your drafts yep. off, right? Yep. So, you notice here we've got a cover plate. You got four uh, number 12 screws. Yep. You can back them out. The center just pops up and then slides out. And so then you can access it still by having all, all your drafts on, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Hopefully no one ever has to get in there unless we're rigging, but anything can happen, you know. Oh, sure. Now it's time to get our feel for the cockpit. How's it feel? Feels good. It's the right height. And that goes back. Yeah, doesn't it, Brent? A little bit? Uh, yeah, you might slide back a little bit. It's yeah. comfortable for me yeah. right here. Yeah. yeah. It's comfortable right here. Yeah. You're pretty tall. How tall are you? 6'3". Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that in the platform, how big it is. It's designed for a bigger guy. I mean, I can't, I can't touch the front. Right. Nice thing is this easeability right here. That's crucial because I run. You run into a lot of boats where my knees hit here as a big guy. Yeah. So this is super crucial. We done a lot of uh, say what we call it TDR technical design review. So ten of us lined up with various. You know, heights and weight, and we had a mock up. Mm -hmm. It's got in and out of the seat, in and out of the seat, yep. tweaked off the back, you know, to try to find that 
that balance for you know somebody from five foot to right. you know all the way your height. Yep. Uh, 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 the rod locker. You guys tow and cover. Right you you can fit uh, nine foot rods in this sucker, and then like if you're rigging, you can basically just you know keep going completely about out of sight or whatever you want. You know. <laughs> That rod locker is massive. There, I probably could have jumped right in there with them. Way up in there, so it's pretty, pretty good. I actually put in, yeah. I actually put in. Uh, we fit 36 rods. 36. In one, and I, I think we probably get four. Now it's time to go visit my friends, the engineers. All right, you know that myself and engineers probably don't see eye to eye. I'm service their engineers. They've hated us for decades. I'm trying to service these things. Um, you know, let's go. Let's go meet these guys and see what that I means. They're yacht guys. Going to build bass boats. Hmm. We're going to see what they think. This is Andy. Andy. How are you? Nice to meet, nice meet you. you. Get out of the world. Tell what you do. How are you? <laughs> uh, electrical engineering manager uh, for HCB yachts and Icon boats. Um, and we we cook it all up here. Um, everything that uh, goes into that boat. Something that we came up with here from the graphics to the way that we interface with the customer is something that we've done new. We wanted to bring the reliability from the larger boats down into the smaller boats um, and give a better user experience. Uh, we've added a lot more things to features to the boats, uh, better control of live well systems, lighting systems, uh, basically anything that the customer interfaces, we wanted to improve that. I can't wait to see you. Go over here. Who's there? <laughs> Let's go next. Who's that? Look at what he's doing. Switchy. He's messing with his switchy. Hey, hey, hey. hey, what's your name? Devin Donovan. Andy. Uh, explain. Explain what you do. Electrical so, uh, engineer. I do all the work here. Yeah. You do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. So yeah. Me and this guy and that guy there, Kevin Fliss, we're electrical engineers here. And pretty much do all the wiring schematics, got it on cable shop, we do uh, vertically integrated, so we do all of our stuff here in house. So cool. um, yeah, panels, you name it, wiring harnesses. Everything. Everything. Yeah. Next, the guy with the vacuum. Dan the stand, the janitor. He's got important too. Janitor Dan. Yeah. Oh, what's going on, guys? Do a little cleaning. Let's <laughs> move over here. What do we got here? Actually, can you show me Dan? Yeah, let's meet Dan. There we go. Let's, let's move this out of here. Yeah. Say hi to Dan. All right. Uh, Dan Lobdell, uh, bomb tech, bomb engineer, uh, myself and Cody Graves, you're about to uh, meet next. Him and I make sure that all, all those parts that all these really smart guys design end up on boats. Uh, build materials, merch deviations, uh, engineering changes. Anything that changes on the boat's got to go through me and Cody. Cool. All right, now we're next. Yeah. Cody Graves, uh, I do all internal management of all the parts that we build in house. And I uh, help Dan do bomb changes. Cool. Jack? Hey, my name's Richie. I'm, uh, I handle all the composites and adhesives and paint. So everything that cures for HCB. Oh. So. All structures, all design elements, selection of materials, troubleshooting, all of the above, all of the above. Yeah, it's got an important job too. Look at this. Yeah, nice. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There's your bass boat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So uh, uh, I'm Matt Osmeyer, and uh, I'm a platform designer here at HCB, and uh, I modeled uh, the the bass boat. Uh, a lot of feedback from our pro riders and a uh, real experienced team of naval architects and mechanical engineers and electrical engineers. So we all came together to try to uh, innovate uh, where we could and uh, hopefully all love the boat. Yeah. We're going go through it, that's for sure. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. This is. This is the main man. This is really the main man. We're in it. That's the main man. He's the coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Mike, because yeah. Mike is so new, so he'll, yeah. he'll talk. We'll keep our distance. Yeah. We'll give Mike four to six feet should do it. Yeah. <laughs> More back here? Give it to him. Yeah. So, Installed model. We do a lot of things when it comes to, um, I guess, prepping. One of which we made scale models. We, we want to uh, do a little bit more CFD. We run CFD on on our holes to kind of dial them in. Mm -hmm. um, does he get to ride a boat? What's oh, yeah. CFD? Yep. What's There's CFD? Uh, computational fluid dynamics. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, speak, speak to America. Speak to America. Because America doesn't know those. <laughs> so, I was thinking about this, and I think that it needs to be told. The, when we started benchmarking, like when we really started looking into what we were going to do with the hull, and it was kind of like, why are we getting in? We do big boats. We come from salt water. We got guys from all over. What are we going to do? Why, what's the purpose? And it was because this is a growing industry for college elite and high school. Is that a true statement? Yeah. 100%. I was just talking to them about the years. So, like, then we bought all the benchmarking boats, and it was like, you know, brought them on in. We start testing them. And even, even the guys, Matt's one of the best drivers we got, and we, we had a hard time controlling all of the benchmark boats. That was a big push from the beginning. Like, if this is really for high school and college, like, we need to design a hole that we're used to, to the, to the standards we're used to. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see that. You're gonna be blown away by what what is what happens when um, some great minds get together and kind of design a hole. Just that alone is enough to, to sell this boat. It gives me chills saying that, but like, you're gonna, um, I guess I want to say like, take your hands off the steering wheel. You're gonna say, hey son, you ready for a high school, you know, bass fishing tournament? There's not a fear of handing him the keys and letting him go do it. That's what it should be. That's how it should be for this type of uh, boat. Um, and I think we produce that, it's pretty exciting, so. All right, these guys are passionate about this boat. They're passionate about what they do. Uh, it, it got to a point where we were having conversations with them all, and you could feel their their pride. You could feel their their, their actually love for the boat and the company itself, which was which was it's something different for me to be able to go through that kind of process with those guys. Who, I mean, you can call them what you want to. They're like boat nerds. Is that what we're going to call these people? Can we call them boat nerds? Yeah. Uh, we can call them that. We did. Um, but that's literally what they are. They want to find every little cork, every little screw that needs to be moved, and all that stuff. We literally talked to one engineer for 45 minutes. Jordan literally held the camera for 45 minutes. Uh, his arm was ready to fall off. And it, it, like, you know, when you're holding your breath and your head turns purple, his arm was like turned purple. Lack of blood circulation because he wasn't moving it. It was crazy. It was great to talk to those guys. Give me your thoughts. Dude. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I need to say anything. They, they speak for themselves. I can't wait. So the, the thing that I'm going to talk about here now, guys, is the testament to this whole group of people, from the engineers to the builders to the, the high ups in the company to when we even walked around and we were able to go through and we were able to, to just hang with the people and kind of feel the atmosphere that's about there. I mean, we got there and they're, they're bumping music like loud, like testing things. There's guys age of what, 60 Jordan probably. And there's guys that are and gals that are age of 25, 24, maybe, you know, in that era. And so the, the, the range is crazy, but you could tell the love and the commitment and the, the just the the ultimate goal of success and quality is, is, is so high at HCB and Icon both. I mean, they're literally, Tommy's kid works there, right? TC's son works there building boats. So it's family, you know what I mean? It's like, that, that boy wants to be good at what like what his dad does. I mean, you can see it, I can see it. I didn't get to meet his kid, but I could see him walking around and I could see him with the same passion that Tommy's got, you know? And that that rings true through that whole company, right through the upholstery people. You could tell, you know, we got to talk to that lady. I don't know if we got that on camera or not when we talked to her, but we were able to talk to the lead uh, lady up there in charge of all that, in charge of all them sewers. It, it is immensely crazy to get the feel in there. It's a positive vibe all the time. And that rings true to their, their quality. When you, everybody comes together and everybody is making a great team and everybody is ringing true from A to B to C to all the way through the whole chain of lines and the high end support is there, that's quality. And hell, that's the American way, is it not? I mean, that's, that's what we do, that's what we should do in this country. We should push to be better than anybody else and push to be the next level. That's what makes everybody great. 
is if I kind of set the standard here, now the rest have to catch up. And once we catch up, somebody new will probably step in and somebody new. That's what makes it for the, for the American people to spend their hard earned money on a quality piece of equipment, no matter what it is, they should have standards. They should have standards. And Icon, you're setting the standard. How we doing? We are out. We are out of Icon. All I got to say is I cannot wait for you guys to see this video. It is going to be badass. It is next level here. I'm learning things. I'm seeing things. I cannot wait for you to see what we got coming. Tomorrow's a whole new day. Unbelievable. All right, thanks to Icon for inviting us all down, for inviting myself, Jordan, the crew, and of course, all of you guys, because that's what we do. We do it for you guys. Without you guys on the other side of this camera that watch this stuff and give us the comments and talk to us, send us gifts. I mean, we're getting stuff that I never even dreamed of. I just opened a box today, and it was just like another thing. It was, it, you guys are the best thing that could ever happen to the marine industry when it comes to this voice that we have. And I say we because it's all of us. I'm sending the word to the big corporate people that this is what people are seeing. You know, we get feedback all day long, all over from all around the world about your products, big corporations, just so you know that. And it's a matter of fact of when Bill Smith or John Doe sends me something and it's a hit and it's like, all right, now we gotta go do some more research and immediately we get 30 or 40 more people that are having the same problem. That gives me power to come at the big companies and I'm not scared to do it because it's us. It's not just me, it's not just Jordan. It's not just Team Marine. It's everybody going at these companies and making sure that we're spending our money and they're building quality. That to me is something that is stronger than anything. We have numbers, it's just cool. Um, so at the end, I think, I think that's just, thank you to Icon for inviting us. Thank you for putting, us, putting your brand to my test. Um, and anybody else who's out there, you wanna put your brand to our test, send it to us, right? Send us, get us, get us to where we're gonna go. We got a media pack, we'll send it to you. You'll see what it costs, you'll see how much stuff's not free. It's just the way it is. I mean, they're, they're willing to put their product out there for me to come and beat the hell out of it and see if I like it or not. So if you're gonna do that, that's what, that's what this industry should be about, right? It shouldn't be about just people inside the company and professional fishermen testing this stuff. It should be about somebody on the outside that's gonna to talk to the community and give them an honest opinion. That's what this industry needs and that's what every industry needs. They need people that are gonna be bold, upfront and honest. So if you're out there, you're sitting watching this and you got a new product, you want us to test it, you can send me the product, I'll do it right here. I'll do a product review right here, or we can come to you and we can do some things. So make sure you're doing that. And if you guys got comments, you want stuff being tested, go ahead and comment on it. Comment, we want to see this get tested. We want to see this boat get tested, da -de da -de da We're getting more invites every every week, it seems like. So it's just a matter of what we pick and where we go, the direction we go with it. But if it, the people want it, we're going to go do it. That's for sure. So at the end, once again, we appreciate all of you. Thank you. Make sure you check out the merch. We don't have the new stuff up yet. I didn't get that done yet. That's my fault, not Jordan's this time. But we're gonna get the new merch up. The new new series is gonna be up. Make sure you're going over there, getting some merch out of there. Um, we appreciate all the merch purchases. It's been great. Um, so get over there. And also check the Icon video. Don't lose the Icon video. Go check the, the water test, the testing. You really get to see, you really get in depth. Uh, Brett's there and he gives you the whole rundown. So it's awesome. I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Um, that's it, I'm done. I'm gonna go. I'm over, done, we're done. So as always, Comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to witness the madness that TC in his office right now in his old ass chair, because he's sitting in an old ass chair for a reason. He'll probably comment about his old ass chair. He's sitting there pounding his fist on his desk going, speed, money, no breaks. I'm coming turkey hunting, TC. I'm out. See ya.